Hello and welcome to Advising with Nick Andre. In this web series, I'll cover the following topics. Signing into MyCCC. Locating your college ID. Viewing your academic records. And finding available courses to take next semester. For your convenience, I place chapter markers for these sections in the description area of this video. To skip a section, just click a time marker. To begin this series, I'm going to navigate to MyCCC by entering the following URL into the address bar. MyCCC.Corning-CC.EDU and hit enter. For your convenience, I placed a hyperlink to this website in the description area. To access student services, I will need to log into this website. To bring up the authentication page, I will click on the MyCCC login icon at the bottom of this box. I am now asked to supply this website with a username and the password for my account. In this demo, I will sign in using a fake student account. Obviously, you will enter your own account information in these boxes and click the login button. In this part of our mini-series, I will discuss how a student can find their college identification number. With any success, you should now be greeted with MyCCC's welcoming page. If you're unable to reach this page, click on the first time link in the description area, signing into MyCCC, or contact Corning Community College's help desk. To access your college ID number, click on this link found in the MyCCC box under the welcoming tab. Your ID should appear here. This particular number would represent a fake student. In this case, Walter White's college ID number. We may need the ID number later on, so I would strongly encourage that you write down your actual college ID number. With this number, I will be able to access student services like degree evaluations and class registration. To access student services, I will click on the My Banner icon found in the upper navigation area of this page. A page like this one should appear on your screen when you click the My Banner link. To view this fictitious student's academic record, I will click on the Student and Financial Aid link found at the top. Before I can sign up for classes, I need to know what classes I must take and what classes I have taken. To do this, I will run a degree evaluation. Your degree evaluation can be found here under Student Records. When I click on the student's record link, I am greeted with a list of choices pertaining to my academic record. To generate a list of courses taken and required courses not taken, I will click on the degree evaluation link. When you reach this page, select the term you are currently enrolled in and click Submit. In this case, I'm going to click Follow 2012 because that's the current semester I'm in. And then I'm going to click the Submit button. Your degree evaluation page may or may not look exactly like the one on my screen. You should, however, have the Generate New Evaluation link at the bottom of this page. Click on this link to generate a new report. To generate a new evaluation, select a program or degree and then the anticipated term you plan on graduating, then click Generate Request. Apparently, Walter is a networking student that has taken 54 credits and only needs 14 more credits until he graduates. Let's see what courses Walter needs to take next semester. At this point, I would recommend that you print out your evaluation so you can highlight the courses you need to take. So I'm going to scroll down and I notice that Walter has his high school diploma. I can tell this because there's a yes under the MET column. I also notice that Walter met his English requirements. I can see this in a couple of places. Mainly here, under the MET column it says yes, required credits that he needed to take was six, and he did take all six credits. To accomplish this, he took English 1010 and English 1020. He received C pluses for both of these. I'm going to see if he met his math credits. Ma um, Walter had to take a math 1230 or higher. And we can see he accomplished this with a yes. 
but apparently he took Math 105, Elements of Applied Math. So when I look over this degree evaluation, it looks like Walter was a Corning Community College student way back in the day when Math uh, 1230 was actually Math 105. So we actually had took those credits and applied them. Ah, I come across my first block. It says that the computer and networking requirements were not met. I see that there's a red no. Out of the 42 required credits, Walter needs. Uh, Walter has taken 31. So let's scroll down and look at what courses he hasn't taken yet. So as I come down to the table, I see three red no's. He hasn't taken CRST 2060, CSNT 1400, and CSNT 2800. Once again, I'm able to deduce this because over in the left, under the MET column, I see thread no's. I'm going to continue scrolling down to see what other courses Walter has not accomplished to meet his graduation requirement. So it looks like his elective for networking is met with computer essentials. And it looks like he has met the social science elective. And I'm going to keep on scrolling down and I see he hasn't met his laboratory science elective. Um, as you can see he hasn't taken any lab science. As a suggestion this area would include astronomy, biology, chemistry, and etc. Since Walter is a networking student, I would advise him to take a physics course, which according to our description, physics is one of the options that he could take. All he needs is just a three credit lab science, so we'll see what's available for next semester later on in this screencast. Let me scroll down and keep on seeing anything else that he might have not taken. Hmm, interesting. Up above, took my Math 105 course for the math requirement, but it also took my Math 106 for another requirement to meet my liberal arts and science elective. Uh, do not get accustomed to the content or the idea that all math courses belong to the math block. Uh, math is considered a liberal arts elective, and so if you have met the math requirement for your program, then if you take another math class, it will fall in this liberal arts slash science elective. Um, you can look at the course catalog to find out what courses actually belong in this block. So, so far everything looks like it's met. He hasn't, uh, he has met the wellness activity, my apologies. And he has met the wellness awareness. Uh, once again, I see a yes in these things and I can see what course he has taken to meet those um, requirements. And I see the course that he's currently taking this semester. Um, another way to see what courses he's taking this semester, you'll notice the Wellness Awareness, uh, Wellness 1000. Um, it's written in the box, it says in progress courses, but up above in the degree evaluation, I see that Wellness 1000 appears with the letter R for the source. So that means it's an active class that he's taken this semester. As you're going up and down the degree evaluation, if you look at the source and if you see the letter R, that means you have that you are currently enrolled in it at this current semester. So I scroll down and I see he doesn't have any courses that are not being used or any attributes that aren't being used. The attribute would be like leftover credits if you will and any courses that were rejected. Typically a repeated course would be a rejected course and will not count it towards your degree evaluation. So in a nutshell, this is your degree evaluation. Like I said, we're going to use it to determine what classes we have taken and what classes we need to take. To review a little bit, it looks like Walter needs to take a lab science. As his advisor, I would recommend that he takes physics. And then the other three courses that Walter needs to take to graduate is going to be in his major, which is networking. And it looks like he needs to take CRST 2060, CSNT 1400, and CSNT 2800. Um, at this given moment, I might be jotting this down or highlighting it if I printed out my degree evaluation so I can reference it later. Now that I established a list of possible courses for Walt to take, I need to determine if any of these courses will be offered next semester and if they have any prerequisites. To find out what courses require a prior course, I will use the course catalog. A link to this document can be found in the description area. I'm going to click on the bookmark labeled course to jump 
down to the section of the catalog designed to give us course descriptions and prerequisite information. According to Walter's required course list, he needs to take CRST 2060, CSNT 1400, CSNT 2800, and a lab science. A course can be quickly found by holding the control key and pressing the letter F one time and in typing the course ID CRST 2060 into the find box and pressing the enter key. I was able to find it in one try. Let me zoom in so I can actually read the course description. Apparently, CRST 2060 requires Walter to have taken CRST 2040 and CSNT 1200. Let's see if Walt met these requirements by going back to his degree evaluation. It looks like he's met CSNT 1200 requirement and it looks like he met the other requirement. Seeing that these conditions are met, I'm going to verify the next course on my list. CSNT 2800. Looks like Mr. White will not be able to take CSNT 2800 next semester as it requires CSNT 1400 and he has yet to take this course. As a result, I will remove CSNT 2800 from my next semester list of courses and add CSNT 1400 to this list. It might be a good idea to check to see if this course has a prereq as well. Control F, type in CSNT 1400, and this time I'm going to hit the left arrow. It looks like CSNT 1400 has a prereq of CSNT 1200, which we know that Walter has taken. To find out what lab science is best suited for his program, I will click on the Information Technology bookmark under the Program of Studies and look for his concentration. And remember, Walter is taking network technology. So here we have computer network technology. And let's see what recommended lab science Walter should take. It is recommended for him to take Physics 1010 or Physics 1580. Let's jump back to the course description area. Here we are in course description. Hold the control key, press the letter F and type in phys space 1010 to see what requirements are for physics 1010. This time it jumps to major collision repair so let me just keep on paging down until I actually find the course titled physics 1010 and here we are elementary physics let me zoom in to make this easier for me to read According to this, Physics 1010 requires Math 1230, and let's check to see what Physics 1580 requires, which is right underneath it. That makes it nice. And Physics 1580 requires Math 1240. Before I go back to the degree evaluation, I want to mention to you how I know these courses will satisfy the laboratory science block. At the end of each course description, a lab science course will state the following, lecture slash laboratory. To see if Walt has met these requirements, I'm going to change back to the degree evaluation. I can tell that Walter has taken Math 1230 and 1240. Sometimes courses can be found under other sections like Liberal Arts and Science. I would recommend scanning the entire document for courses taken to meet a class requirement. I guess Walt can take either Physics 1010 or 1580. Since Walt is a networking student, I would recommend Physics 1580. Walter has now established a potential list of classes to take next semester. Before he makes an appointment to visit his advisor, Walt's going to check to see what classes are offered. Finding available courses to take next semester will conclude this web series. If you are not sure what courses you need to take, click on the third time link in the description area below viewing academic records. To access the master schedule, Walt will click on the Student Services and Financial Aid tab at the top of the page. 
and then he will click on the registration link. This page will present him with a few options. To see what classes are offered next semester, Walt will click on the lookup class link. In this particular case, Walter will choose spring of 2013. You may need to pick a newer semester than what is on my screen. After choosing the correct semester, click the submit button. Referring back to the list created in the last section, Walt realizes he needs to take CSNT 2800, CSNT 1400, and Physics 1580. Let's work on the computer courses first. In this box, Walt will select Computer Network Technology and click the Course Search button. Luckily for Walt, both CSNT 2800 and 1400 are offered next semester. To get sectional information for these courses, he will click on View Sections next to the Course of Interest. I would recommend that you write this information down or print it out. I'm going to copy it and paste it into a spreadsheet. So let me highlight where it says Select and the first column of the table and come all the way down here to the last cell. And I'm going to right click on any one of the blue areas and choose copy. And then I'm going to open up my Excel spreadsheet and then I'm going to click on the very first cell A1 and then underneath the paste command I'm going to click on the arrow and choose the second paste option keep destination format. Now I'm going to go back and continue this process until I produce 12 plus credit schedule. So let me go back to my web browser and let to new search. I will repeat this process until I was able to produce a 12 plus credit schedule. Now it's time to find his lab science. I believe we were looking for physics 1580. So I'm going to scroll down to physics and I'm going to click on class search. Unfortunately physics 1580 isn't offered next semester so Walter will have to take physics 1010. Let's see what time this course is offered next semester by clicking on the view section button. It looks like Walter will have some choices for next semester. Just like before, I'm going to select this table and copy it into my spreadsheet. Let me clean up this spreadsheet so it's easier for us to understand it. I'm going to destroy the first column. This is really unnecessary to have, so I'm going to right click and choose delete. I'm also going to widen out my title column so I know what the courses I need to take. While I'm here, let me explain something. The CSNT 2800, or Accessing the WAN, is a course that has a lecture and a lab. I look at the title and it says Accessing the LAN, and then underneath it it says Accessing the WAN-LAB. Both these courses have to be taken together. So consider that when you're looking at the times and the days that these courses are offered and you can compare it to other courses. So I see accessing the WANs offered on Monday, but it's from 11.50, let me widen out this column. So 11.50 a.m. to 1.40 p.m. And the lab appears to be right after that at 1.41 to 3.30. It has a capacity of 12, and so far nobody has taken that, so all 12 seats are available. I'm going to erase these other columns as they are not necessary for what I'm going with right now. So let me delete these columns. I'm going to widen out the column for instructor. And then I'm going to leave the dates alone. This allows me to know if it's a late starting course or if it's going to be a 15 week long course. And I'm also going to leave the column for location so I know where they're at. The C tells me that they're in the classroom building. And the attributes, well, they're not really necessary for what I'm doing today. So I'm just going to delete this column. And now I'm going to go back through and I'm going to look at the three different sections. I have accessing the WAN section, I have routing protocol section, and then I have elementary physics. When it comes to accessing the WAN and the routing protocol, there's only one offering per each of those courses. So I don't have much of a choice there. 
Fortunately, there is no schedule conflict between the CSNT 1400 and the CSNT 2800. I can tell because the CSNT 1400s offered Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 1045 to 1140. The other course was offered from 1150 to 140. So it looks like these courses are back to back. The labs, one's offered on a Monday from 104, sorry, 141 to 330, and the other one's offered on a Tuesday from 215 to 1205. Once again, you have to take both the lecture and the lab for these courses. Now let's take a look at the physics. The physics course is once again a lecture lab offering. However, I have multiple sections. I have a section one class or I could pick a section two course. Notice under here I also see 71, 72, 73. Typically a, a lecture lab course will have a lab section that starts with a seven. So it'd be like seven one or seven two or seven three. There are three lab offerings for these physics courses because there's not enough lab space per the lecture. So they had to offer three sections of labs, but only two sections of lecture. With this information, I'm going to go compare it to the other classes that I have to take to eliminate any schedule conflict. I see that section one is offered Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 835 to 930. And section two is offered from 940 to 1035. Now, it depends on your cup of tea. I like my classes to be back to back to back so that I can start and end and be over with everything, but you might want to break in between your classes. So I see that the 940 to 1035 would be perfect for me because it allows me to go from physics to CSNT 1400, that's the routing protocol course, then to accessing the WAN. If you don't like that, then I would suggest to you to take section one, which starts at 930, sorry, 835 to 930, which will then give you a break. Then you can go to your routing protocol course, then accessing the WAN. These are things to look at when you're scheduling, but do not forget that you need to take a lab and try to find room for that. I see the labs are offered Wednesday and Thursdays. So the Wednesdays doesn't seem to be a conflict, nor the Thursdays. So to me, since I'm already up on campus on Wednesday, I might take that. Now, this is where things start to be rather interesting. If I come over here to the instructor, I see that Thomas Dunbar actually teaches the lecture part for the 835 offering Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and he teaches the lab for the Wednesday at two o'clock. I like to have my lecture and labs with the same instructors. They sort of correlate better. And that's not a requirement, it's just it's easier for me as a student. And that's going to make me choose section one now over section two. Now that I know what section I'm going to pick, I'm going to hide the section I did not choose. So I'm going to hide section two by right clicking on my column number, choosing hide. And then I'm going to hide the other two labs that I no longer need. So let me hide those. And now I'm going to delete my column headings. So I have a continuous list. I see that I have three credits for accessing the WAN, plus four credits for routing protocol, and another four credits for elementary physics. This seems to be a decent schedule for next semester, except for one thing. This schedule only contains 11 credits. This may or may not be a problem, depending on Walt's situation. Regardless, Walt would bring this list to his advisor, and they would work this problem out. This concludes our web series on advising. In this series, I demonstrated how to log into Banner to generate a list of required courses for your program. After running a degree evaluation, we viewed the master schedule to see what courses would be offered and generate a potential schedule to go over with an advisor. Now it is up to you to meet with your advisor and discuss your educational goals and ways to accomplish them. This has been Nick Andre, and I want to thank you for your time advising with me.